and welcome to What's Coming in Version 2022.1 for Geology. We here at Geographics are very excited about the upcoming 2022.1 release this fall. This release is very likely the most feature-rich release we've ever had. In large part, the release focuses upon what we heard from you, our users, to make the software more robust, performant, feature-rich, and easy to use. So with that introduction, let's see what's new. We heard you, and we delivered. One of the main areas of data management improvements we heard about was around curve data management. We now can bulk merge curve sets. This will make it much easier to take individual curve sets, link them in a hierarchical order, and merge them over a filtered set of wells. We can filter curves on import with a user-defined mnemonic well list. This is an ASCII well list that will filter only those wells in the list from your imported curve file. We can delete multiple curves from the selected curve set. We've updated the curve inventory dialog box to make it larger, resizable, and more full featured. You can now hierarchically assign field data curve sets to individual wells by listing the curve sets in a hierarchical order, and it goes from well to well, and if it finds that particular curve set, it makes that curve set the field data curve set. We can restrict the creation of null curves on UDE output, so you're not writing null curves to the output for a curve that could not be calculated. We can post more data types on the presentation template. We can delete null curves only from any curve set, and in the depth registration module, we can now digitize and pick tops directly on straightened images. New petrophysics features. We've had external models in petrophysics for a long time. These models were built either in C, C++, or Visual Basic. But if you're not a programmer, sometimes this proved to be quite a challenge. Now we've integrated Python external models, not only into petrophysics, but in Geoverse Geographics as a whole. You can either write your own Python models or choose from an extensive library of public domain models and integrate them into not only your petrophysical analysis, but also anything that can use any Geoverse Geographics datasets. We now have curve set independent on presentation templates, so you can put any curve for any curve set on any track and present it at its native step rate. We have graphical facies analysis and cluster analysis. Also, we've gone through and made the dialog boxes larger, in many cases resizable, and made the data fields longer. We now have added attributes to our interval data. So you can add any type of data interval attribute, either being a numeric attribute, a text attribute, or a date attribute, and save them to Wellbase. Numeric attributes can be made into log curves and displayed on the presentation template or used in UDE modeling. Introducing Geoverse Geology. Geoverse Geology is a melding of our new Geoverse X section with the Geoverse Geomodeling in the past. Geoverse X section is an updated version of X section that includes all the features you know and love in X section plus many, many more and it's completely integrated with Geoverse Geology and its new functionality. Geoverse X section can either work in geosurface modeling mode, where you're modeling the surfaces on the fly, or in unmodeled mode for maximum performance. You'll find that this will operate exactly like you do when you're using X section with no significant differences. We focus on ease of use and familiarity. Expanded the map view features to include making layers with well base or zone manager layers. And we've included property maps that you can make directly from zone manager attributes. So let's talk about the demo of the major new features for Geology 2022.1. I'll first be covering Geoverse Geology and the new Geoverse X section. Within that demo, I'll be showing curves that independent on the presentation templates. 
and the interval attributes for well base and log curves. And then finally, we'll switch project. And I'll show you the new depth registration, curve digitizing, and top picking functionality. So on with the demos. We'll start with a workflow you're all familiar with. I'm here in GeoAtlas, and I'm going to start by making a cross section, just like you've done with X section, to find the cross section well to well. We'll take these three vertical wells here. Define the line of section, double click. Now we have a choice. We can send it to X section, just like you've done in the past, or G verse geology, or G verse smart section. We're going to go with G verse geology because that's our new module. The first time you launch G verse geology, you'll get this What's New in G verse geology 2022.1 dialog box. I'm just going to always show it on top. I'm going to turn that off, close there. Now it's going to ask you, do you want to open a new interpretation? Well, we have none because this is the first time we've done this. So by creating a new interpretation, any of the configuration we've done in here will be saved when we get it in interpretation name. So we're going to create a new interpretation. And within this interpretation will be launched the new Gverse X section. Let's go ahead and make it full screen, full extents. And now you'll notice that these menus are very familiar. Here are your picking menus. Here are your annotation menus. Here are your interval menus. All of your editing menus are the same. I can come in here to the edit Wells Logs or press the icon Wells Logs. And coming across here, you're going to see everything is pretty much the same that you would see in X section with some notable extensions to make it more full featured. Let's just start with the well logs and we will go ahead and add from the project area our clay minerals and organic shale PRT. Our UDE will be the clay minerals user defined model. Next, let's go to the layout. We're going to change the vertical scale. One inch equals 50 feet. And then the vertical clipping or the depth interval. We're going to set it to absolute measure depth of 6,000. And uh, I think that's all we're going to do here and click OK. And then we have some new tabs down here on the left. You'll see I've got a wells tab that shows a well list and you can change the names that you want to in here. I've got the templates. If I had some predefined templates, which it looks like I have a couple of predefined templates, this would format the cross section for us. Here are our surfaces available to us from the currently active stratigraphic model, or I should say currently active uh, strat column manager. Active well can be very useful. You can open up here and you can assign any project template or any system template to any cross section well, individual, all the wells on the fly. Very useful. And of course, we can also show any isomap layer as a drawn surface on the face of the model. We'll just stay with the surfaces for now and we'll just make this full screen. Now we're going to be picking just like we would if we were at X section, but let's define what, what are we going to pick first? So let's open up this well in Geoverse Petrophysics and take a look at it. Now the orange surface here, that's the base of Latoka. The green is the top of the Barnett. We're in North Texas. Here's the maximum flooding surface in the Barnett, the Barnett, the basal Barnett, and down here, the violet correlation line is the top of the Ellenberger. Between the maximum flooding surface and the basal barnet, we've got some build-up complement components, which also have some storage capacity, so we're going to make this our target. But while we're in Geoverse Petrophysics, let me introduce the new curve set independence feature. So in this blank area, I'm going to create a new linear track. And to that track, I'm going to add a new curve. 
Now, instead of just coming from the field data, we now have choices. We can choose any other curve set. I'm going to choose the Barnett Net Bay calculated curve set and the curve within it, the volume of TOC, and let's just change the attribute of the curve itself. And so this curve is being displayed from a separate curve set from the field data at its native step rate. So let's return to GeoGebra's Geo Modeling, and we're going to be picking tops. First, let's flatten here on the basal barnet, and we're going to be picking the barnet target surface. So we're just select, select it here within the list. Come up here to our familiar picking menu, turn on the picker, you'll see it goes to barnet target, and I guess I'm going to be JRW, and let's go ahead and pick the surface right here here and maybe over here and turn off the picker now if you want to change the way the surface looks it's quite easy just right click on the name change the display properties this may be changed to a red color and maybe a little more weight and there we have it the barnet target is now a layer that we picked just like you would in next section no difference here we're not modeling we're in straight unmodeled modes the performance should be equal to X section. Next, let's feature the new uh, attributes for the intervals. So let's zoom in here on this well, the first well over here. And let's turn on our interval picker, just like you would if you were at X section. And we're going to go with the reservoir interval. And we're going to say, well, here's some good competent reservoir right there. And right here is some more what we consider a confident reservoir. Let's turn off the picker. Now we want to add attributes to the interval. Here's this reservoir interval. So I'm going to right click, go to interval data fields in the context menu. I'm going to give it a new data field name. And we're going to call this competent. It's numeric. Its units are just going to be user defined because it's either going to be competent or not. Click OK. And we're going to say that is competent. So we're going to have a value of one. Or in other words, one means true. Click OK there. Maybe select this one down here. Do the same thing. Come in here to our interval fields. And for that one, give it one. True value, in other words. Now let's take a look at this and what it looks like in well base. So let's go to the well base well. Here's our intervals tab. It's numeric. There's our reservoir interval. There are two intervals right there. And now we have a competent component field over here with one in it, which indicates that yes, it is competent. So we might want to indicate that on the actual PRT. So let's return to Petrophysics. And let's add this interval to our petrophysical template. Let's add another track over here, linear track. And we're going to be adding interval curves. So right here, you see here is our reservoir. There's our data field competent. And so the curve name will be int underscore reservoir underscore competent. So this is the one we're going to be adding. So I'm again the field data curve set. And there it is, competent. Again, let's change the attributes. Maybe make it thicker and maybe make it something that will contrast with the with the blue interval. And let's change the scale from zero to two. And now we can see in this track here, you're coming down here and you can see you're going from zero to one to zero again and to one down here. Now this can be also be used in your UDE to flag areas that have competent um, components within the shale itself. Now let's return back to Geoverse Geology in our cross section. And let's change the layout. So I'll go to the layout menu here. We're going to change it to proportionally spaced. 
and change the vertical scale from 1 to 10. Go to full screen. Now here's where are some of the differences between X section and G versus X section is the ability to put seismic data into your cross section. So we're going to choose from the seismic options, the G versus geophysic interpretation, this B shale, the default seismic volume. We can also add horizons and faults, geobodies, or modify the display, but we'll just keep it as it is. Turn on the seismic backdrop. Now you immediately see that the correlation lines are not following what the seismic says the surfaces are. This is where we want to get into the geomodeling aspect of G versus X section. To better show what happens when we do the geomodeling, let's put the cross section and the map view side by side. So here's our map view through the window. Slide it over here. That view right here. Minimize those other applications so they're not in our way. And let's apply the model. So we can do it from either the map view or the cross section view. We'll just do it from the map view. This new icon here in the geom modeling group allows us to apply the model. Now it's going to say there are no surfaces and faults in the model yet. Do you want to apply it? Yes, we do. And it'll give us a chance to say, well, what surfaces do you actually want to put in the model? This is our currently active stratigraphic column. So we're going to put in the Allenberger up through the Barnett surfaces up to the Atoka from the seismic volume. Now we can pull surfaces from any data source we want to. In this case, the base of Atoka is coming out of well base. We can combine that with data points on our isomap layer. We could use an isomap grid as a source of a surface. But in the case of the Atoka from my seismic volume, we're going to choose G versus geophysics, the B shale interpretation the smooth Atoka horizon, and it's going to come from the Little Hoss 3 uh, survey. So let's go ahead and uh, turn on the surface constraints tab. This is where you set up the relationship between the surfaces. So the Atoka from the seismic volume, we're going to make it conformable with the uh, base of Atoka and then conformable with the upper Barnett. And likewise, we'll just stair step these on down. put that one in there also so that the uh, Atoka from the seismic volume will be controlling the conformance of the basal Atoka and the basal Atoka will control the conformance of the Barnett maximum flooding surface, the target, the basal Barnett, Ellenberger, and the upper Barnett. We can also put in any faults if we have one. We can network older faults against younger faults. We can create dynamic thickness maps either as isocore or isopac. And like I said in the introduction, we can even bring in zone manager attributes. But we'll just keep it as it is for now. And over here on the map view, we're going to turn on the Barnett target. Now you see it was only picked within the three wells. So you just have a triangulated surface. And over here on our cross-section view, we're going to turn on the surface that we want to see there being modeled. Now notice... The, this Atoka from seismic volume, let me just change the color a little bit to make it a little bit easier to see. Let's just go with yellow, click yellow. You see, it's following the event here, the strong positive event that is the base of Atoka, but there is no conformance yet added. So we're going to apply our conformance tool. Again, we can do it from either the cross-section view or the map view. We'll just do it here from the from the uh, cross-section view, and we will update the model right from here. We can also update it from the map view. And now you can see 
all of the surfaces are now being conformed to the surface controlled by a geophysical surface in the cross section. And the Barnett target over here in a map view is also conforming to the uh, a token from seismic volume. Let, let me just show you this. There is the token from the seismic volume, and here's the conformance for the Barnett target surface, all in synchronization. Now let's talk a minute about the integration of the map view with GeoAtlas. So let's go ahead and make it full screen. Up here on the display, we can bring in GeoAtlas maps just like you were in GeoAtlas. So here's that same base map we started out with. Select it, and it will bring in the same layers in the same order with the same visibility property as you saw over here in GeoAtlas. Additionally, on the Layers tab, we can make geosurface models from the layers that uh, are on the model itself. We can bring them into isomap layers. We can create well-based layers directly from here and display and also zone manager layers. We will be adding in a future release the ability to do native isomap layers or conditional pies. Another part of the integration is the ability to take advantage of any X-section, cross-section you may have. So you probably have a large inventory of X-section, cross-section you don't want to have to reproduce. So just select them. I'm just going to select the XSD file, which is a saved X-section file. Bring it in. I'm going to save my interpretation, which saves all the configuration we've done up to this point. We'll just call it my interpretation. These are the extra surfaces that are on the X-section cross-section, but are not in the model. So we're going to put those in there. Yes, we do want to see it. And there is our X-section cross-section brought over. And these surfaces, because the modeling is turned on, are being conformed with the uh, geoservice model. These upper two surfaces, this M and LS surfaces, are not being conformed. Therefore, they're just straight conformant surfaces. Again, we have the ability to do the seismic backdrop. And uh, then this becomes part of the listing of the cross sections over here in the map view. I haven't named this untitled one, but this one came in from the uh, X section. It's called vertical wells. Now let's talk about some of the other features you've got within GVerse Geology you don't have in GeoAtlas or in the old X section. So let's go ahead and load all the wells. Currently, we're just loading the wells that were in the cross section itself. So we're going to load all the wells in this AOI. These are being loaded into the model. And let's turn off the Barnett target surface for clarity. And so these are all of the wells that are what we call interpretation wells. They're in the model. So one of the new features in the past couple of releases is the ability to calculate your wells bore in the zone of interest. So let's just select a group of wells of interest. Right click on here, we're going to calculate wells in zone. And we can calculate wells within zone of a thickness map, which come from zone manager. So this could be a defined zone manager top and base. We can explicitly define surfaces, or we can actually bring them in from depth converted geobodies come from Geoverse Geophysics. But for our purposes, let's just go with surfaces. And we're going to do it between the maximum flooding surface and the basal barnet. We're going to add that in there. We're going to say we want to calculate from the landing point, and the landing point angle we're going to set as 85 degrees. Let's go ahead and calculate that. We don't want to have to see the log file right now. So here's our report. Each row is a different well. Each column is an attribute. So here is the length within the zone. Here is the percent within the zone. And here is the percent within the total well bore itself. You can write these out to the zone manager, to the clipboard, save it as text. And uh, if it's in zone manager, then you could add some things like uh, what is the IP cross plotted against the percent or the length and zone and get some idea of why wells are producing the way they are. Let's close that under the selection. Another nice feature you've got in Geoverse Geology you don't have in GeoAtlas or X section is the ability to make what we call buffered cross sections. I'll just do one here. We'll just start here. 
drop it down to here. Any wells within the buffer distance will automatically be projected into the line of section. So let's change the layout for that buffer projected cross section. And again, we're going to make it 1 to 10 on the vertical scale. We're going to set the top clipping absolute measured depth to 6,000. And the absolute measured depth for the base or the bottom to 7,000. Click OK. There's our cross section. Again, if we have seismic coverage, we can turn on the seismic backdrop. And the nice thing about the projected buffered cross sections is I can take that line of section, drag it to a new position, and it will rebuffer the well into the line of section. So I don't have to make individual cross sections. I can just do the projected buffered lines of section and just move them around as necessary. Let's go ahead and close that for now. Don't need it. Let's talk about another type of cross section. It's called the block diagram. The block diagram will create a, another projected line of section, but it will only show the penetration of the well bores within the line of section. So let's go ahead and end the definition here. And we're going to change the layout on this also. Maybe make it 1 to 20. Because it's 5 to 1 vertical exaggeration. Let's set the clipping. Absolute measure depth is between 6,000 and 8,000. OK. Make it full screen, a little bit better to view it. And so these are the projection points of the wells within the line of section as it penetrates that plane. I can now turn on the distances between the wells within any particular zone. Notice that in these three wells are only between the maximum uh, of basal barnet, I think, no, that's the maximum flooding surface, and the target zone. This one is outside of that zone, therefore it's not calculated. But what we can do here is we can display the boundary distances between the wells and the edge of the cross section, which could be your drilling spacing unit. We can change the font with the display preferences. So you can see the text a little better. And also the horizontal distances, we'll change those. And just like with the buffered projected cross sections, if I move that line of section, it again, it immediately updates and now it will show me which wells are within the zone and which wells are out of the zone. And also, again, we do have that depth converted seismic backdrop available to us. All right, let's close this one. And let's turn on the 3D view from the Home tab. Again, this is not available in a dynamic sense inside of GeoAtlas. Any open cross section, in this case, this is our three wheel cross section, becomes a fence diagram. And so let's turn on some of the surfaces here. Maybe the Ellenberger, the Barnett Target, the Upper Barnett, and the Basal Barnett. And we'll exaggerate it a bit. Maybe, well, let's say five to one. We can apply an aggregate color fill across all the surfaces here. So we're applying one color palette so that in this case, the hotter colors are going to be shallower. The colder colors are going to be deeper. We can add properties to our surface like we can do the contours. We can do an overlay. Let's say the land grid, make it more, make it a little bit darker. And on the cross section itself, we can add data like tops. I know the cross section as a fence diagram. We can add logs, maybe the gamma ray curve. 
change their properties, maybe make it a lathe. Let's close the properties panel and maybe on the 3D add the map image. And on the main map view, let's add our target. Here we can also add color, edit the contour options, maybe just do a straight color fill palette. And there you have it, the new Gverse Geology. I hope you found this introduction to Gverse Geology and Gverse X section interesting and informative. We've worked hard to make Gverse Geology intuitive, easy to use, familiar and powerful. Now let's shift gears and take a look at depth registration and the new log curve digitizing and top picking. I've now changed projects to a project that has a lot of raster images in it. So we're going to launch depth registration. Pick a well. Make it full screen, easy to read. And we see we have a number of different log sections that have already been registered. We're going to be focusing on the 16 inch normal curve up here and digitize it on this last log section. And we're going to focus in on this sand package down here. So let's turn on the digitizer and make the left registration. That was zero ohms. The right registration was 20 ohms. And to start the picking, we have two modes, a polygon pick mode, which is a click, 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 or a click and drag mode. We're going to start with the click drag mode. So we just hit a click here and just drag along here. When it comes to the point of wrapping, we just click the wrap tool and change its scale from zero to 200. And I'm going to use the polygon pick mode right here and just go click, 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 back to the regular scale and the drag pick. Off scale again, polygon pick, 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 pick. Back to the normal scale, drag pick mode. Now, if you make a mistake, like I missed this little feature up here, all I have to do is just simply come back in here and just drag right through it. Likewise, if you want to delete a point, just hover over the point, delete the point. If you want to delete a stroke, a stroke is just a section that's been digitized. So we're going to disconnect above and come up here, right click on it and delete that stroke. If you say, well, we really didn't want to do that. We do have an undo right here, undo last edit. Now, when we're ready to save this curve, you notice we have no curve set here. We're going to make a curve set. We're just going to call it digitized. and make the step value 0 0.5 feet. And for the curve, it was a shallow resistivity curve, so we call it res shallow ohm meters. And save the curve. Now to see the circ curve we've saved, we just load the vector. And there it is, as it's digitized. Okay, we're going to turn off the picker, and I'll show you how to make actually individual surface picks or top picks. First, we will add all the picks to the log. And notice this pick up here is 1WX00B. There's actually a 1WX001 top right here. That we'll add. So we'll turn on the picking menu just like we have in Gverse Geology. Let's 
find the top we want. It's this one right here. Add the picker. Come down to here and see we're going to pick it right there. And save it to Wellbase. And we can come back and open up that same log in Petrophysics. Let's just open up the Petrophysics module. Open up this well that we digitized and add the formation tops. Drag the log down to our interval. And there is the one WX01 top we picked in the depth registration and the shallow resistivity curve that we digitized in depth registration. Well, thank you for your attention. I hope you've enjoyed our introduction to the new release for geology for 2022.1 and that you will look forward to using our new Gverse geology and our new depth registration tools. So thank you for your attention and have a great day. Thank you, Fred, and thank you everyone attending for being a part of this presentation. My name is Hamid and I will be taking you through what all is new in the geophysics part of the 2022 version. Um, and the first couple of features that I want to show you today are centered around our focus on integration. This is integration of all different kinds of data that you produce uh, in the different geographic geographics apps, but also integration of workflows. Making the transfer of these data as seamless as possible, and that is where I'd like to start today. Um, so one of the most important pieces of data uh, that you that you have available along with your seismic is your well logs. Uh, in the past, most uh, you have been able to do in terms of displaying log data in Gverse Geophysics has been these uh, line curves either side of the well. Uh, that gives you the information that you need, but it limits you. You cannot display more than two curves, for example, one on either side of the well. Um, it also doesn't let you do area fills or color palettes and other advanced features uh, that will help you get more insight into your log data. That is changing with this release because now you can take any one of your log templates that you've defined in Gbra Spectrophysics and enable that on your well. Um, so I'm just going to take this uh, as an example. I just click OK and that takes that template um, and all the features that are available in that template. So I've got a litho track here with the area fills, with the, with, the, with the curve bounding the right edge of that area fill. I've got my data postings. I've got some perfs here, some DSTs here. Um, I got the depth track, my depths displayed up on over there as well. So all that information available here on that locked curve. And of course, uh, you know, you can right click here and say, hey, I want to apply it to all those wells. Say yes to that. And that's going to take wells, uh, take that template and apply it to all the wells that are available on that section or in that interpretation. You have to go and configure each well individually. Um, and of course, the template is kind of uh, getting in the way of the seismic. The seismic still being your key piece of information that you really want to be looking at all times. And go back to my well log display here, and you can control the transparency of that of that uh, template on a per well basis. I could say, all right, I want to. 50% transparent template so I can actually see through it. I can see those horizons. I can see what the seismic is doing behind this log template because your log curve template could be as big or small as you want it to be. There could be multiple tracks in there. Um, like I said, you can have multiple logs in multiple tracks and all these different uh, advanced features of the log template um, designed in GBR Spectrophysics. So again, the integration being data or, or templates that you're creating in other parts of geographics, you're able to use them as is in any of the other geographics applications. One more uh, feature that's uh, kind of uh, important to mention here is the ability to run a UDE. So I could choose any UDE that I have, a preset UDE or a UDE that I have created, and those curves will then also be automatically calculated and displayed on the template as you go. So that is uh, one aspect of the integration, being able to use data, being able to use templates that you've created in other parts of geographics in Geoverse Geophysics. Um, but when you want to 
really truly integrate uh, geophysical and geological data, you can't do that without good robust depth conversion. And that has always been a focus for us for the past three, four years. We've really improved our depth conversion workflows in many different ways. And one of the new aspects that we've added this release is the ability to take your velocity model, convert your seismic to depth in real time and display those results right here on your seismic section. So this is the time volume and the, the vertical axis that I have here is milliseconds. But now from the right click menu, I can switch from a time mode display to a depth mode display. And now all of the data on my section changes to depth. The vertical axis is now feet, DVDSS, the seismic has been converted using my active velocity model, whatever velocity model I have set up as active, um, the seismic is converted based on that. All my horizons that are shown here as intersections are also converted. The wells are now being drawn, you know, using their surveys. They're not, there's no TD function time depth conversion applied to these wells. And if you um, kind of scroll down here, you'll be able to see all of that information available. If I turn on my formations uh, to, to display my formation picks, these two are now being drawn um, as per the actual picks on the well. Um, and that's that's what's going on uh, here, is that I can, I'm taking my velocity model and converting my seismic, converting my horizons, converting my wells, and displaying them all in uh, in the depth mode. Now this function is also available in the 3D view. So if I switch over to 3D, and here I have a scene with a couple of horizons, a fault, a geobody, a couple of sections in there as well. And I can take this entire scene and I can convert this to depth mode as well. So if I switch to depth mode, that's gonna go in and right now it's computing, figuring out all the surfaces, all the seismic, all the faults, and it's going to then give me the result in terms of and there is my depth converted seismic based on um, all the different, uh, the, based on the velocity model that I had and uh, the horizons, the fault, the seismic, the wells, the deviations of the wells, everything has been converted to depth um, and this entire scene is now in depth. Um, right, back to my, my 2D view though and on this section now, so I've converted my, my section from time to depth, but what is the model that I'm using to convert? What are those, what are those velocity values? That, are, that is also a key piece of information that you probably want to have. Now uh, we have tools that let you do that as well. So if I now go to dataset version, which lets me choose the volume that I'm using uh, to display these data on this section. Uh, these are all added to the interpretation, but I have this option for the active velocity model. So this goes to the whatever velocity model I have set up at, as active and reads those velocity values and displays them on the section. So these were the velocity values that were used for that depth conversion. So it's very um, easy to go in and find out what exactly uh, is the function that is uh, being used to, cre to, to create those time depth uh, that, that depth converted seismic that you were looking at earlier. So that's how easy it is to be able to view all of that data. Now, so once you have your depth conversion in place, you looked at your velocity values, you're happy with your depth. Now, of course, one of the one of the very uh, big advantages of being in, in geographics and having the access to all these different tools in, the, in, in petrophysics and in geology, all is that, is that you can take this arm line that I have open here with two wells uh, right down here and I can convert that into a seismic section, uh, into a geological cross section. So I'm just going to say create cross section and that's going to then open that up, depth converted and uh, send that into a cross section in GWERS Geo Plus. And let me kind of zoom in here. You'll be able to see the template that we had, uh, that we were using on that arm line. That is carried through. The seismic is available as, as well. This has also been depth converted uh, and is um, kind of being updated on the fly. Of course, this is a geological cross-section, which is in depth. Um, and if I right click here and I go to my seismic options, I also have access to all of the horizons and faults that I had picked in that interpretation, in that seismic interpretation. And I can kind of choose which ones I want to show here. I'm just going to click OK and that's going to show up as the FS7 horizon and I'm kind of going back here. So this is not a formation pick that is being displayed uh, from the geological data, from the well, well data. This is actually coming directly from the seismic uh, horizon and, and being displayed over here as well. So we've made many changes to this 
uh, this tool and to make it more usable faster and Fred has gone through a lot of those and one of the most powerful things that we bring this cross-section brings is the seismic backdrop is this dynamic conversion of seismic to depth and display here and the access to all the horizon faults that you have uh, available as well so again the integration focus being not only just being able to consume all these di different data in all these different applications but also at the workflow level trying to make the exchange of information between all these applications as seamless as possible um, all right so let's uh, move on to the next uh, uh, features so right now we just talked about the on-the-fly depth conversion and the ability to use GWAS Petrophysics templates on your log displays um, another feature that we're adding this time uh, has to do with horizon picking across 2d lines uh, let me switch back to my 3d view uh, of course you can do this in 2d or 3d view but here I have a horizon that is being picked that has been picked on this one 2d line going right through here but I have this network of 2d lines these intersecting 2d lines that I might want to be you know picking this horizon on um, and instead of having to go through now and pick this horizon on each of these individual lines one by one what I can do is just make sure this active is, and this horizon is set as the active horizon and then from the horizons menu I'll just track it on 2d lines choose the lines I want to track it on I'm just going to track track it on all lines it is going to automatically figure out where all these inter intersections are and then it's going to track that horizon along the 2d lines that it can find uh, that that kind of intersect each other um, and that's how quickly you can now have that horizon picked uh, without having to go in and each individual line and pick those pick that horizon individual so again uh, and and any shifts that you have applied so if you blind balance your your uh, if you blind balance your uh, seismic those shifts are taken into account and it goes through and it kind of at that intersection location goes over to the other two lines starts tracking along that line any other intersections that it finds it tracks along that so it makes it much faster to be able to pick your horizons on 2d line so that's another uh, new interpretation feature that we've added in 2022 um, all right next up is the ability to build better synthetics now synthetics again has been one of those uh, things where we've really focused on in the past a uh, few releases uh, and this time too uh, so let's just find a well here and just right click it and go to my synthetic editor and in here too now uh, you know the synthetic editor itself has many uh, new changes that we've added mostly in terms of being able to work with it more easily so you can see this orange line running through across all these tracks that's uh, that's the cursor tracking that we've added so you know exactly where you are in all these different tracks that we have at all times uh, we've also added the you can you can add up to five custom tracks and by a custom track uh, when you add a custom track you can actually assign any log curve to it so i can go in here i can say hey i want to see a gr curve uh, and so you can have five of these tracks five different curves of your own choice that you want you could put a caliper curve in there a gamma ray curve in there any other curve that helps you make that decision whether the synthetic work that you're doing uh, you know it results in a more accurate synthetic or more understanding of the data at that point also in terms of display uh, the number of lines the scale that's all customizable not just for the custom track for all of these different tracks so i can go in here and i can set my values for my sonic my density uh, my custom tracks let's say you want for this gamma ray you want it to be from 0 to 150 um, and you want to divide this into 10 equal intervals um, and that's basically what it's doing so it's got giving you 10 lines so that it just makes it a lot easier to understand see where the the you know what these values mean what they're doing you could flip your axis as well but uh, the left has 150 put the right has zero and that's going to flip your axis uh, if that's what you want to do if that's how you're used to looking at your log curves um, so a lot of this functionality is now available uh, which was previously not quite there in the same view interface uh, in terms of being able to work with your data we've added a new uh, log processing uh, method uh, which is the value editing which lets you go in and actually change the values of the log curve um, so I'll go in here and I'll say all right for this depth range I think the value should be you know zero and that's gonna uh, run that for for that bit of the curve it's gonna replace all the values within these two orange lines uh, with zero 
Um, and you can go in and you can play around with as much as you as you want. For example, you, for this you want it to be 150 on the process. That's going to change that value to 150 and so on and so forth. And also one of the things that you've changed is that as you go and you, you choose your areas, the changes that you apply are now applied only to the to the region that you that you choose that in and all the previous values are preserved so as i go in and as i modify my curve you know all of the previous values are are also retained in the older versions if you made changes up here if you had any changes up here and you changed something in this interval the uh, that would reset the previous curve to the original values but now it's preserved and when you save it, all of these changes are now saved into the database so that you can then go ahead and use your curve um, in uh, for your for your synthetic workflows. Um, so uh, again, features added to uh, to help you visualize more data, uh, make make sense of it more easily by adding grid lines, by controlling your scales, by having cursor tracking, and then new process types to help you modify the data so that it is telling you what you need or what it, what you need it what you needed to tell you. On the data loading and management side, one of the key things that we've done is make it easier to bring in your time depth tables. Now this is also, um, uh, it's one of the, again, one of the key components here because you can't view a well on your seismic without a time depth table. It lives in well base uh, and that's how you would, bring, that's where you would bring it in. But we've kind of made it a little easier now to handle all the different kinds of tables that are out there. Because time depth, the trick with time depth tables is that there is no standard format for them, and all these different software that people have um, output different kinds of tables, different datums, different uh, units, different setups. So we've kind of built in a customized ASCII importer that'll let you handle all of these um, all of these issues that that you run into with when importing time depth tables. Um, so here's our import dialog. It, opens up you choose your file and then you can you know standard ascii stuff where you choose your delimiter your columns and all of that stuff but also the problems that are unique to time depth tables hey is the time that's coming in two-way time or one-way time uh is the depth dvd dvdss what are the units seconds milliseconds feet meter and then what are the times referred to are they referred to the interpretation datum are they referred to the well datum the seismic datum or something else altogether as well many software refer times to the seismic datum and the depths to the well datum. So this importer will let you handle all of that and then you uh, give it a name, import it, activate that. Um, all, of done, all of that done made a little more streamlined instead of having to you know, open up your time depth table in an Excel sheet, make all those calculations and then have your uh, wells show up in the spots where you expect them to show up. Uh, we also have a Velocity Survey Manager that we introduced last release, which uh, shows you all the wells that have Velocity Surveys, and then all the surveys within all of those wells, which you can then go in here and activate one by one. Uh, makes it a little easier. We have a bulk activate as well. Makes it a little easier to go through. Uh, you know, this is just a handful of wells, but if you have 100, 200 wells, uh, you know, going through wells one by one uh, is very tedious, very time consuming. Uh, so kind of always trying to make it easier for people to do that. Um, in addition to this, we've also introduced uh, different uh, newer horizon formats uh, that you can support, fog formats that you can support. And then when you're bringing in your 2D lines, you now can, can assign the line, names to those lines directly from a table from a CSV file instead of having to go and define a place in the header to do that. Um, so other usability enhancements that uh, that are always a part of this uh, uh, of any new update that we bring to GeoForce Geophysics and Geographics in general, um, we have the ability to copy paste display settings, um, uh, you know, uh, little circles next to horizon names and fault names uh, to identify those horizon faults through colors. Uh, many many resizable dialogues. We're always and that's that's going to be a theme that you're going to see throughout Geographics is where we're going in and we're making sure that all the different dialogues that we have can be made bigger, smaller, uh, to, to fit the information that you're trying to view in there. Um, added bulk action buttons and a lot more, uh, just so that you can maximize your um, your time, sp spend your time trying to uh, solve the problems that you're trying to solve instead of fighting the software. So that's basically a summary of everything that's coming out for GeoVerse Geophysics in 2022.1. 
uh, the release should be out fairly soon. I'm 